good morning everybody this is george and we're doing something a little bit different today because well uh, we're out and gonna go fly fishing this morning albeit it's a little on the breezy side out there anyway so here's what we've got uh when we take a look at the market today and where it's been you know basically going from the last i would say year and year and a few months year and a half so back here we started to see a shift uh in the the april may we started to see that shift of course you know in uh, march uh, you know of 2020 we had the uh, lockdown and then people did not stay home uh we saw a immediate uptick not only in inventory but impending sales and then of course we started to transition into having more solds than we actually had inventory available so we can talk about the inventory you know continuing to head in a downward trend from basically may because remember everything here we're looking in a rear view mirror so the sales that we see in june actually went under contract in may so everything on the green side is basically kind of the previous month right whereas the active uh, you know number of homes total available the light green here that shows you basically a a real-time running number kind of like the you know new on market and then of course our pended sales so Again, as we've mentioned each week, as uh, you know, we kind of hit February, and March to start looking for a little bit of a shift, a little bit more of a balance uh, as far as inventory. And we're starting to see that because historically, right, we've been, you know, in the in the mid 50s, you know, 46, really about 42 to, to 48 percent, you know, less inventory, not just shy of half. Well, what's interesting is, <clears throat> as we're starting to see this change, we're seeing, hey, you know what? We're down to 31%. That's the lowest it has been in literally a year, okay, as far as disparity, meaning that we've only had, you know, we're only down 31% year over year. Now, understand, this number is going to continue to go down because here's our here's the June of last year. Okay, here's May of last year, and we can see that our inventory levels and our sales levels, you know, are going to start to moderate because as, yes, we continue to see more sales each month and our inventory has continued to drop, to drop, to drop, and to drop. Uh, normal spring, we're heading up, we're heading up, we're heading up, and we can see the blue line. This is our active, uh, our our active, uh, our new on market, I should say, and these are pended. So our pended, you know, we had our our typical, you know, little little delay. So uh, and then of course we headed back up and have been heading back up, uh, you know, for the last 60 days. Here you can see that you know we're starting to drop off a little bit, even though the last seven days, last seven days we've had the greatest number of homes coming on market. Now, interestingly enough, as we look at the pending homes, okay, uh, we actually have 1,681 pended homes. We only have 1,424 sold homes where we had 1,975 homes coming on market. So this is our greatest number. We did have a bunch of folks coming on. And what's really interesting is, even though we had more people coming on, uh, we have much lower numbers here why many times because we're starting that transition of of uh you know kids being home starting vacations the weather's been absolutely amazing you know thought processes have been in other places does that mean that you know our market's starting to shift absolutely not <laughs> in fact uh, the farthest thing from it uh, you know our market is still doing amazingly well in fact, when we come down and we'll take a look at, you know, again, year over year. So if we consider, you know, Jan, uh, January of, of 21 through, you know, June 4th of uh, 2021, and then, of course, over year 2000, you can see very clearly that, you know, our pended sales right here are up, you know, 21.6%. We're, um, you know, we're 28.7% uh, above you know where we were at this point last year even though last year was still an amazing year when we take uh, a look at 
just the numbers themselves, this is going to start to moderate each week. This will continue, I would anticipate, as uh, more sellers come on market, that will start to wane just a little bit as we head into the summer months. And historically, historically, uh, you know, we kind of hit a what we call a real estate ghost town from about mid to late May uh, all the way through June until after the July 4th weekend. And the reason is that, you know, hey, people are going on vacations, you know, they're getting out, they're doing things, adjusting to, you know, kids being at home. And I know not everybody has, you know, kids at home, but it is a, a very consistent trend that we have. And, you know, it's the same thing, you know, out, you know about mid-December, you know, until mid-February, again, that is a, a real estate slowdown. And again, totally expected. Even though like last year, we saw a little bit, not a ton, but we saw a little bit of, of, of lag in June, but still did amazingly well. Are we still doing that same level of activity? Yes. Are we seeing more activity? Yes. So what's gonna happen over the next 30 days? And a lot of folks are saying, George, you know, hey, what's, what's going on? All right. So we're going to see a little bit of a bubble as far as activity, you know, as people are going to go out and do things, they will be definitely still keeping an eye on the market. They will be looking and pursuing homes because homes are still going off within the first 10 days, seven to 10 days on market is a very consistent uh, sales or to go under contract timeline based on a well-priced home. Now, when we talk about a well-priced home, we come back to this number. All right, so again, to, to bring logic back to things, okay? You have, you have only seven to 14 days of inventory. A healthy market has four to six months, four to six months of inventory, months, four months to six months of inventory makes a healthy market. All right, now we have 10 days, 14 days at the most, two weeks, half of one month, okay? When you have that little bit of inventory and yet you still have a massive demand, as uh, Sinar, one of the team members that was uh, in the other week, she used her, her can of beans story. And I still, I still love that analogy. I think that's awesome. All right, so if you have five cans of beans, you're in a store and you have five cans of beans, and you have 500 buyers. It's Thanksgiving dinner and everybody wants to make green bean casserole. All right, the first part, it doesn't matter what you price that, that can of beans at. You could place that can of beans at 10 cents and it will still find market value does not matter. A home will be the same thing. I have proven it time and time and time again. Understand very clearly, no home will sell for less than market value in a limited inventory market. All right. Based on that, we should never have a, a reduced price. Okay. This was a, this was either a, uh, they were really trying to push price B uh, the seller has the wrong expectation. C or yeah, C. Uh, you know you've got a, a an agent that overpromised. Okay, uh, and that is that is the challenge. Okay, or you know D. They they just they just misinterpreted the market. Okay, uh, the challenge is with there's so few homes on the market. I can completely see misinterpreting the market. You know in some areas and whatnot where it is hard to. To, to really derive what the true demand will be at what price because, well, nothing has been on market. Nothing has been there uh, for such a long period of time that, yeah, I can see where, you know, you might, you know, throw your, throw your line in the water since we're fishing today, since you're going to throw your line in the water and see what happens. And if nobody's biting, yeah, you have to do something different. But that's not the case in all of these, okay? like this, uh, or down here when we talk about expired or we talk about canceled, okay? These numbers, they should not exist. The, there's more than enough buyers out there. Now, for those of you that say, oh yeah, it's gonna go under contract and you know nothing, nothing ever fails you know, because they're crazy, crazy. Well, look at here in the last seven days, right? Right here, last seven days, you can clearly see that we had 101 homes that came back on market, okay? The sale failed. Now, that could be for any number of reasons. That could be because of an inspection. That might be because, uh, you know, they, they, 
they realize that they pay too much, you know, whatever it might be, just understand homes do come back on market. And this is a classic one and we're seeing it right here. All right, so let's get back to it. What's gonna happen over the next 30 days? Over the next 30 days, again, we're gonna see still some really good activity. Uh, we're gonna see a greater amount of activity after the July 4th weekend. I know it even happened last year. You can see that July of last year, that was a that was just a real game changer. And then consistently, right, we came through because remember this was our three peat month. I said, are we gonna have a three peat? Absolutely we did. <laughs> and then it just kept going and going and going and it's still going. And will June be the same? June will continue to be the same unless we see a massive amount of homes coming on market, which is not expected. And for those folks that are saying, you know, oh, we're going to have shadow inventory coming on in October and September. Uh, no, you're not going to see that. They they are already in process of, of coming up like what we already discussed with forbearance programs and 40 year mortgage programs. And people are not going to walk away from their equity. They're just not. Uh, you know, in 2008 through 2013, sure, they were in a negative equity situation, meaning that if they sold their home, there was no chance, you know, they were still in debt. There was no chance they were going to have any money at all. In fact, the in debt was almost as equal as what people have in equity now. And they're not going to walk away from that. Uh, I just had a, uh, a conversation with uh, Qualstar Credit Union yesterday, one of the credit unions we work with. Uh, absolutely awesome company. You know, we were going through, you know, trends and what we were seeing, and they totally agree. Uh, they, you know, they're saying, yeah, you know, this this is a completely different experience and environment than what we were in uh, before. And uh, the feds aren't going to allow, uh, you know, a massive amount of uh, folks to come on because there's absolutely no reason, zero reason, uh, because people have money. So if people want to stay in their home, they are offering 40-year mortgages, other alternatives, you know, to help people out. All right, mortgage rates. Mortgage rates, again, have been bobbling quite a bit. And uh, I did not pull up a chart. I don't have a chart for you. Sorry about that. I can tell you that at this point, you know, par pricing is still right around your 3%. There was, uh, uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, rate sheets that came out. Uh, if I pop this over, a couple of rate sheets that came out. Uh, as you can see, uh, this one from Wells Fargo, which is uh, one of the ones I received. These are discount points. This is what it costs to buy down the rate. Uh, you know, to get you, you know, some of your uh, 3.125, uh, they're doing a buy down. Uh, I believe Dan Golden is like 3% or real close to it. Uh, and, you know, when we talk about some of the jumbos and whatnot, uh, when we talk about uh, Jeff Bell, uh, Jeff Bell is another guy that I know. Again, this is a buy down rate right here. Okay. But you wouldn't know it. And, you know, this is advertising and that's, that's what it's about. Uh, you know, you've got your 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 criteria uh, for this also. You know, they have their maximum loan amounts. They have their maximum LTV, loan to value. You have to have a minimum 760 credit score, okay? Not everybody has this. A lot of people will be in the 700s, but they don't have a 760, and they're not doing 75% or lower uh, loan to value, uh, and they're not doing a $500,000 loan. And when you take a look at that, uh, you know, this is a very finite group of people that will fit this rate. But, hey, uh, you know, this is what they're saying. We'll do this at, at that rate. Okay, well, that's fine. Well, that's not as exciting. So par pricing today is about 3%, so understand that. So when you guys see those lower rates, you need to ask the questions like last week. And I can have Marie repost that, that video from last week. Listen, you need to pay attention to the five key uh, mortgage questions that you need to ask. All right. One of them, are, you know, how, you know, what is the, what are the points? Okay. What is the loan to value that you guys are asking? What is the credit score minimum that we have to have, uh, you know, to qualify for this program? Okay. And uh, really, really the, the, the end of the day is what is the cost? Okay. And to make sure that it's, uh, it falls in line with everything else. Listen, uh, the Fed, you know, the, 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 the Fed set a rate. The banks set their profit point, which all of them are pretty consistent between one and a half and two percent. OK, and that's, uh, you know, what we call cost plus. All right. Commercial lending, uh, you know, and, and whatnot is, is very consistent with that. From there, 
it each and every little bank has its opportunity to say, okay, you know, how much am I willing to to margin or reduce that margin? And every once in a while, they'll throw out a teaser rate to uh, create business, right? First Tech does it all the time. There's nothing wrong with it. They're, they, they are probably a little more transparent about it. When they need more loans, they offer these amazing programs that, that really nobody can compete with. And it's absolutely awesome. Uh, and then when they need to slow it down, they just increase the rate. And, and that's exactly how that works. But it's a marketing tool. So understand, make sure you're looking at the big picture of rate when you're looking at that. In the meantime, uh, don't expect uh, a whole lot of change uh, through the month of June. We're expecting a lot of it to be very steady. As you can see, even last uh, last year, which again was still a great market, we were still, you know, very close numbers all the way through. And then remember when I said, uh, you know, at the, uh, the, you know, the school year, the uh, end of uh, uh, August, you know, and September kind of kicks off, and then uh, August or October tends to be a, a higher a higher month. As you can see. We've got that, and then we start, you know, heading uh, slightly downwards. There we go. Gives you guys some great numbers to uh, to work with. And uh, if you have any questions, please post them for us. We will be out fishing. If I get a chance, I'll send a couple of pictures. We do catch and release. Uh, if we get some uh, really nice fish, or if I remember, I'll send them off to Marie. She'll post them here. Anyway, in the meantime, you guys have a beautiful day. Make sure you share this video. If you like what you hear and you like your friends, <laughs> share this video so they can see what uh, what's going on and what to expect. And uh, again, post questions, subscribe uh, so that you're alerted of when these videos come up. And uh, let us know if you want to go fishing with us because, well, it's always fun to have people to go fishing with. In the meantime, you guys take uh, and have an absolutely beautiful day. I will talk to you later. Take care.